For our last MP complete problem, let's look at one problem that doesn't have to do with graph theory or satisfiability. This is a very set theoretic problem. It's called a set cover. We're going to be given a set and a collection of subsets. A set cover is a subcollection of those subsets such that their union is the original set. So let's look at an example to make this a little bit easier to look at. Here we have a set that has eight elements and a bunch of subsets. I'm not going to go through all of them. Let's look at S1, S2, S4, S6. So S1 contains 1, 2, and 3, which means they have 1, 2, and 3 up here. Maybe we don't X them out down here. S2 has 1, 4, 5, 8, so I X out 4, 5, and 8. S4 contains 6 and 7. And S6 contains 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, or sorry, S6 contains 2, 3, 5, 8. So this is the set cover because I X'd out everything up here. Let's check the next one, which is S2, S3, S4. S2 has 1, 4, 5, and 8. S3 has 2, 3, and 4. And S4 has 6 and 7, so that's a set cover. Let's check the last one, which is S1, which has 1, 2, 3. S3, which has 2, 3, 4. And S6, which has 2, 3, 5, 8. Notice we don't have 6 or 7 in this cover, so it is not a set cover. We're missing 6 and 7. Missing 6 and 7. So this is what a set cover is. To prove that it's MP complete, we did that. We had an entire module on how we can union sets together in an efficient time. See union find. I hope that we feel comfortable saying, yeah, we can do that in a reasonable amount of time. I'm not even talking about it. So... We're going to reduce the vertex cover problem to the set cover problem because the set cover problem has the word cover in it. And so does vertex cover. It's a good reason. <laughs> so let's do this. We're going to take a graph, which is part of our vertex cover problem, and reduce it to a set cover problem. So given a graph, we're going to define our set in the following way. Our set is the set of all edges. So our set here is E1 through E9, all of the edges of the graph, and our vertices are going to correspond to the sets, and we're going to indicate them by saying which edges are incident on that vertex. So V1 is incident on E1 and E2, V2 is incident on E1, E3, E4, E1, E3, E4, and we do that for all of the vertices. So we, we convert this graph into a set and a subcollection, and then what we want is that this graph has a vertex cover of a certain size if we have a set cover of a certain size over here. So let's look at a vertex cover. Let's say we had V4, V2, V5. Let's check that this is a vertex cover. We have this edge covered, that edge covered, that edge covered, that edge covered, that edge covered, that, 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 and that, all touching red vertices. So V2, V4, V5 is a vertex cover. And if we look over here, we have E1, E3, and E4 coming from S2. We have S4 gives us E2, E4, E5, 7, and 8. And S5 gives us E6, E7, and E9. So it is also a set cover. If I had a vertex cover, it covers all of the edges. So if I union together all of those sets, it's obviously going to cover all of the edges. So this proof is relatively straightforward. Let's just read through it quick. We have a graph G and an integer M. That is what an instance of the vertex cover problem is. And then we're going to define our sets that we need. U is going to be the set of edges. And SI is going to be the set of all edges incident on the vertex VI, and the collection C is going to be the collection S1 through SN. Our collection here is the set of all vertices, and then graph G will have a vertex cover of size M, if and only if it has a set cover of size M. We are going to map GM to UCM, which is a strange mapping here. We're going to take the graph and map it to a set and this collection. And to compute all of these quantities, just like we saw before, it's going to take mn time. I did not prove this. So 
But if you do this on your own, you'd have to prove this. I'm not going to go through the details. It is a relatively straightforward proof, but it's not necessarily worth diving into all of the details here. So this is our final problem we're going to look at. I want to quickly give you guys a sense of what all of our proofs have been so that when you do this on your own, you have a bit of a template to follow. No, this is not how all proofs work. This is just a template to help you reason a little bit. So here's our rough template. We need to prove that problem Q1 reduces the problem Q2 in polynomial time. The way we've done this so far is we've let, in, we've let Q1 be an instance of the first problem. We then convert it into an instance of the second problem. We then show that the answer to the first one is yes, if and only if the answer to the second one is yes. We then explain the mapping we did when we did this conversion up here and explained how it took polynomial time. This is not necessarily the most helpful, so let's look at a particular proof that we did. I'm going to look at the click reducing the independent set in this form. So we let Q1 be an instance of Q1. This was G be a graph and K be an integer, and that makes it an instance of the independent set problem. To convert it, we computed the complement of the graph, which we did here. And then we proved via our lemma that the answer was yes, if and only if it was yes. What we did is we said it Q1, our first problem, the first graph, V prime, was an independent set if and only if V prime was a click of G bar and vice versa. We proved both of those. And then we explained our mapping and explained our runtime. So you can read through this if you want. This is a rough idea of the way we did our proofs. I don't recommend formatting your proofs in such a rigid way. You typically want your proofs to be sentences that lead naturally into one another. It should be a rigid sentence. But this is the idea behind our formatting, like an outline for a essay. This is kind of what we're doing here as well. This might help you do some of the proofs that I will ask you to do on the homework.